Hi everyone, uh, Jennifer and Rebecca here from Daily Wonder, here with our weekly parent education series. Today we're talking about mental health and Daily Wonder's approach to mental health, how we fit it into the curriculum, how we see the importance of guiding parents and children through um, their understanding and awareness of mental health. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, when we were thinking about this topic, one of the thoughts that came to us was around parent mental health and how all of you are sitting there day after day with your children and feeling all this, you know, potential pressure to bring this, uh, to bring your child's education to your kitchen or wherever you are. And it's a lot. It can feel like a lot. So we thought, we thought about, you know, talking to you about prioritizing your own mental health. And this can look like you know how you begin your day do you begin with something warm some tea and just kind of ease into the day do you really honor that independent work that your children are doing so that you have a moment to yourself to just take a deep breath do a stretch when you're sitting at the table do you take a moment and probably it'll just make Jen and I do it is just you know stretch up your back just do a little twist and just breathe deeply and be mindful of yourself in that moment because it can feel like a lot when you're there for the whole morning um, you know, and things, sometimes challenges arise and it can feel a bit overwhelming. So it's nice to really manage your own sense of self and your own peacefulness in these tiny moments. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions other yeah. than those deep breaths and stretches? Well, it kind of, I guess, touches on the bigger piece, which is, you know, it, like we're all working on having our own healthy self-care practice and just, you know, taking that for yourself, whether it is five minutes that you can carve out of the day, but using that as a way to ground. Because, I mean, we say all the time that being a mother or being a parent is, is such an over, it's such an intense job and it comes with so many amazing experiences and so many challenges and it can be very triggering. And then being a teacher, you know, equally challenging and here you are doing both. So we can't really emphasize enough how important it is to, to, to have that self-care practice because that's appreciating with gratitude what you've taken on and, and how much work that really is. And that it's not about being perfect or having the perfect curriculum and, and imparting to your child every single drop of knowledge and wisdom you can. It's really about embodying a healthy human being yourself mm -hmm. and, and being able to know when you need to ground, know when you need to walk away for a moment and take a deep breath and, and kind of emulating that for your child. Yeah, and you know, taking that moment sometimes at the end of your morning lesson to jot down your ideas and think about all the positive things that happened that morning and some things you'd like to try differently the next day. That can be a useful reflective tool also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always love referring to um, Marty Elliott, which is the, um, the nurtured heart approach. Heart approach. Mm -hmm. And how I, it always sticks with me, but you know, you can have a bad, you can have what you would deem a bad day of teaching and you know, it's this it's like that black cloud on this otherwise fine day. Mm -hmm. And it's really important at the end of the day to acknowledge how many beautiful things did take place. Or even if one semi good thing took place to, to focus on that and let that be the thing that, you know, gives you sort of um, motivation for the next mm -hmm. day. Yeah, absolutely. And so like Jen said, you know, when you are the measure of a positive mindset and, um, you know, healthy, healthy, um, you know, just a healthy way of being in the world, then your child is seeing that. And so they're taking up that positivity and they're taking up how they, how they meet challenges and how they respond to challenges mm -hmm. in the day. So being an example in that way. And, you know, again, when we say that, it's not to add more pressure that now you must no. be <laughs> exhibiting like the perfect mentally well-balanced human. It's about being human and making a mistake and then owning that mistake. So if you are teaching one morning and there's a lot going down and you get you know, unraveled and maybe lose it a bit. Um, you know, take that deep breath. If you have to walk away and your children need to do some quiet reading or playing for 10 minutes and you come back mm -hmm. and you're like, you know what? These are the things that just happened. I'm really sorry that I, I lost it there or I was feeling stressed. You know, let's, let's try again or let's assess what just went down or how, however old your kids are, what's appropriate. Mm -hmm. But owning that you were stressed and that you reset and you came back and you're ready to try again and that's what helps your children realize that of course you're gonna you know have your moments where things don't go as as you thought they would mm -hmm. there's always an opportunity to reset that's so important mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and just showing what mental health looks like is more love and more compassion for yourself not you know 
that we're berating ourselves for having made a mistake as mm-hmm. a human. Mm-hmm. And so even, you know, in the, what, what makes positive mental health is a, a kind of a lot of different skills and strategies and capacities. And so we, a Daily Wonder, we really wanted to put into the lesson plans some of those opportunities to create space for learning those skills, capacities, you know, states of being. And so we'll talk a little bit about that and how we do that. Mm-hmm. So did you want to add? Were you about to no, add I want you to no. add something. <laughs> that was a segue for me. <laughs> um, so if you're in BC, we have, you know, taken a lot of um, focus with um, like direction from the core competencies and have connected them. So when you look at personal and social awareness, there's a lot of connection to mental health and well-being. So uh, that is connected into our curriculum. If you're in BC, if you're not in BC, it's obviously still extremely important and valid. Um, things like, you know, whatever age your child is at, that they're, that they're building a sense of independence, you know, that that's gradually happening, contributes to mental health and wellness. Um, be able to set goals. So it, we always have these uh, flex weeks where there's chance for independent projects. That's an amazing opportunity for a child to to manage their time and to have a plan and to put effort into executing it and it may be not going out, go, like panning out as they planned or you know, a lot of opportunity for things to go differently than expected can shake up your mental health. And then how do you manage that? How do you come back to regulating your emotions? So um, yeah, independent projects bring a lot of that into it. I know in my grade four to seven, writing whenever I introduce an independent project into the daily wonder curriculum it's like a big disclaimer parents understand that this is more than just about the project this is about an opportunity for your child to manage their emotions and regulate and manage stress and independence so that's happening all the time mm-hmm. in our curriculum and, and building perseverance and those kinds of things as well exactly like resilience mm-hmm. resiliency is like one of the biggest things of mental health because of course we're gonna you know, hit a low point, but can we come back up from it? And these are all opportunities that you as the parent get to model and to highlight for your child. So let's say they had a meltdown because they were making the clay Roman arch and it didn't work out as planned and they're like a puddle on the floor and you're going, but remember that moment when this happened or when they pull themselves together. I'm so happy to see that you, you know, were able to, you know, just highlighting this one little gem Mm -hmm. in a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. Um, The other things we focus on throughout the curriculum is um, a positive personal and social awareness. So getting it, um, building self-worth and an understanding of, you know, what makes your child unique and and how they honor themselves. And then connecting that to your culture and background, your family's values. This builds a lot of self-awareness, which contributes to positive mental health as well. Mm-hmm. And connection to place, wherever it is you live, going, you know, going outside um, at least once a day can really help that connection to place and community as well, mm-hmm. and identity. Right, and of course with our intentional movement activities um, woven into the curriculum or into the daily routine, plus the emphasis on going outside, like those play a huge role in mental health mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and sometimes that's a tool, right? If your if your day is crumbling before you one tool you can use is, you know what, it's okay. We're going to leave this for now and we're going for a walk in the forest Mm -hmm. or on the beach or down the street and that's perfectly okay and Mm -hmm. then come back and debrief about that. You're building those skills even if you have to set it aside, your morning lesson, set it aside. That's okay too. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe another piece that helps parents to take some of that pressure off like just and also to realize what Rebecca's saying is true, that you can stop for a day and you can you know, do something different that's going to bring the family together or to clear your heads or whatever. So um, I know as a teacher, like starting out new, which probably many of you as parents are new to this, my biggest burden I carried was that I was going to, you know, ruin their lives or not teach them one particular thing that was going to, you know, set them on a course for destruct disaster. Like there was so much pressure that it took me many years as a teacher to realize that that's just not the case because they're absorbing from all angles you know, knowledge and wisdom at all times. And there isn't one thing that you're going to miss that's going to set them on a a course, a trajectory that you, you know, didn't intend. So taking that pressure off and just being, you know, in the flow of like heart-centered, 
you know, imparting of beautiful lessons when the opportunity, you know, is ripe and ready for it and taking those healthy breaks when the day feels like that's what it's calling for. Mm -hmm. And remembering that all those challenges are opportunities. Yeah. To just look at what it is and how can we get through this together? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's huge. Like mm -hmm. everything is a learning opportunity. Even the day that falls completely mm -hmm. apart, then, you know, you come back together the next morning or you go to bed thinking, okay, what, what was it that kind of seems to have, you know, created this trouble or this disaster? And then, you know, maybe you problem solve or you go to sleep with that question at night, which is a lot of what Rebecca and I have done over the years. You know, you have a really bad day in school and you can't figure out what it was, but you sort of hold it in your heart. Like something's not quite working at this time of day or with this child and just fall asleep with that. And sometimes you end up with some really mm -hmm. beautiful inspiration in the morning, or maybe you just, you know, you can problem solve it differently. It's just like tweaking your rhythm, your routine could make a big difference as well. Mm -hmm. But taking that time, like with a little bit of meditative practice. Mm -hmm. And all those little things you're doing and you're probably doing so well by now with your routines and your rhythms, those are one of the keys to mental health as well because you're, you're setting your child up to know when do I eat and what should I eat and when do I do this kind of activity and followed by this activity, make sure I get outside, that I have a way of waking up to the day. All of these things are part of that setup for the big picture of mental health as well, mm -hmm. sticking with a rhythm and a routine and your your, um, you know, how you approach your own rhythm and routine also is an example. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there we go. We've covered it. We hope that, you know, this gives you some inspiration or just, you know, puts your mind and heart at ease that you're doing this. You, the thing that you've chosen is such a beautiful journey that, you know, just keep showing up and keep you know, checking in that you're centered and if you're not, find ways to become more centered and that's just feeding your children. You know, the more loving presence that you can build in yourself, the more of a gift you're offering your children and the healthier you will all be. Yay. Yep. Okay, bye. Thanks for showing Thanks up. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you again. Bye. Bye.